Today we're going to learn how to barbecue chicken the way I do it. Uh, we're going to do barbecued chicken thighs and we're going to do half birds. And I'm going to show you how we butcher those into chicken halves and I'm going to show you how we prep the thighs. Uh, but before that I want to talk a little bit about chicken. It's, um, it's a question that comes up quite a bit to me just, just on the side of things. Uh, what is light meat and what is dark meat and, and, and why are they so different? We all know that light meat, when you grill it, uh, if you cook it too long, it dries out really, really fast. And the dark meat, uh, you have to cook it up past a temperature much further than that before it gets tender. Uh, and that's because they're made up of different things and they have different needs in the chicken's body. Uh, if you know what um, fast twitch versus slow twitch muscles are in the, in the human, uh, that's, that's a quick it's, it's a good analog for understanding light meat and dark meat and chicken. Light meat and chicken is fast twitch, so it's made for uh, really quick movements, bursts of energy. That's why the breast meat of, uh, of a chicken is light meat, because it's flightless, and so it only needs the wings for a burst of energy to get away from something uh, or to get up into a tree or to jump up onto something, so it uses it very quickly. Uh, the thigh and the leg are used all day long for locomotion, and so uh, they have different needs, and they're a slow twitch muscle. They, they, have, uh, they have a lot more myoglobin in them, which we've talked about before. It contains oxygen and the muscle, so it doesn't exhaust from its constant use all day, keeps that on demand. And so it's a darker product. There's also more fat there. Uh, but they are an aerobic muscle because they're used all day long, like our calves or our jaw muscles or our hand muscles or things that don't exhaust really quickly because they can be used with a lot of long-term endurance versus like uh, our pectoralis muscle or our bicep muscle that is really uh, used for one or two really strong, quick, isolated movements. Um, and uh, they exhaust very quickly, as you'll know if you've done a bunch of curls before or anything like that. So those are fast twitch muscles. They are anaerobic, they're glycolytic. Uh, and that's the way uh, chicken muscles are divided up also. And you can use that same logic and move it over to uh, like a wild duck. Uh, duck breast, wild duck breast is dark meat. But that's because they don't use that for fast twitch. They use it for migratory flying, long, long periods of time. So just like the chicken uses its uh, thigh and leg all day to walk around. So that's the difference between light and dark meat. Uh, we're going to be cooking these two products, the chicken thighs and the chicken halves, to pretty different temperatures. The chicken thigh, because it is dark meat, has a lot more fat in it, and it can handle a lot higher temperature. So we want to take it to that higher temperature, because we want, in the end, to have bite-through skin on this product. That's the goal for today. Yeah, and on the, on the half chickens, we'll also want to have bite-through skin. So we want to take them up as high as we possibly can, but we don't want to dry out the, the light meat, the white meat, the breast meat. Yeah, and so... When you have a skin on uh, braise environment, you can take white meat up to about 175. After that, it'll dry out really fast. Uh, if you're just grilling light meat with no skin on it and you're cooking on the grill, you don't want to take it up past 155 or 160 because it'll dry out immediately. But keeping the skin on it and doing a braise does keep it pretty moist. So we're going to take our chicken halves up to a different temperature. If, uh, if you see that happening through this video, that's why we're doing that. So let's go ahead and get, get ahead with this here. Um, one technique we're going to employ before we get started is something called dry brining. Uh, a lot of people talk about brining uh, their turkeys and brining their chickens and things like that, and that works really well. You, you submerge the entire bird in a brine, in a salty mixture, and that salt through osmosis can move into the meat and season it. Uh, it doesn't carry really the, the esters and compounds and flavors associated with the seasonings and spices into the body of the meat, but it does carry the salt in. And that's important because salt is the most important seasoning for anything. Uh, dry brining does the same thing, where we put the seasoning with salt on it on the product and we stick it in the fridge and let it sit overnight. And that way that salt can move into the body of the meat. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And so uh, let's get started with this. So we're going to take them out of the bag here and dry them off. That's the first thing I always do is I dry these birds off. They have a lot of saline solution, salt, and water that they're packed in as a brine. It makes them weigh, weigh a little bit more, so you're, you have to pay a little bit more for them. But they're very inexpensive. This is why I'm, I like to cook these. First thing I do is use a pair of poultry shears and I remove the tail, also called the Pope's nose. And then that kind of shows you where the spine is, where the backbone is. And then you take these shears and you just cut along the side of the backbone all the way up. And whenever you get up there between the, uh, the two wings, 
you're done and you then turn it around and you go back down the other side. It's really simple. You see the inside of the bird there. And then we'll just cut down this side. A pair of poultry shears helps a lot here. Cuts right through those ribs. Now, this is uh, this chicken lays open pretty well, but it doesn't want to lay completely flat yet. There's one more cut that we make in this cartilage right here between the two wings. So it's soft cartilage. It's very easy to cut. So just take your knife and see right there where I'm touching, you just make a little slice, and it will allow that chicken to lay flat. And now we have what is called a spatchcock chicken. This is a very popular way of cooking them in the oven. You cook it meat side down and skin side up at a very high temperature when you when you cook them and uh, it's an easy way to uh, to cook them really quick in the oven and evenly because they're so flat. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I remove the ribs also. We just cut through them on the spine and they're just barely attached now because we've already cut through them. So you can see they pull apart really easily. They're just barely attached on there. So I like to go ahead and remove them. I think it does a couple things. One is it allows the smoke now to penetrate all the rest of that flesh where it couldn't have before that we're going to be eating because we're not going to eat the ribs, uh, and it allows seasoning on that part of, the, on part of the meat. So I do this. You don't have to, but it's very easy. I'll show you on this one too. You just get your finger and thumb under there and, and pry it up and just touch it with a knife and it pops right off. The main connection point of the ribs was on the backbone and we cut right through that, so the hard part's done. These come right out. And then if we were to and what we're going to do next is remove the wing tips. We'll have what's ready to be cooked as a spatchcock whole bird chicken. Today, we're going to cut the bird in half and make chicken halves. But I just wanted to show you that you could cook one like this if you wanted. Go ahead and remove any of the large globs of fat, especially under the skin where you can get to them, because that fat will keep that skin from rendering and keep that skin from getting soft and bite through. Take the wing tips off. And there we have it. And like I said, I'm going to go ahead and cut right down the middle. That's all soft tissue. The cartilage is a little tough, but a knife goes right through it. You can go ahead and cut through everything, including the skin, and then we'll have chicken halves. This is the way I like to smoke them in halves like this. They're easier to manage. You can pick them up with tongs. They fit in the pan easier. The portion's the right size for, for smoking. I prefer to cook chicken halves over a spatchcock chicken or a whole chicken. All right, and we're also going to cook chicken thighs today. These are plain old bone-in, skin-on chicken thighs you get at the supermarket. There's only eight in this one, and they're pretty large. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and clean them up. When you get them, they're an absolute mess. I mean, they have all kinds of extra skin hanging off of them. There's pieces of bone fragment in there. There's often pieces of cartilage and stuff like that. But they're really easy to trim up really quickly. I just take anything that's excess off there as far as skin and and fat goes. You can see that skin goes way out past where it needs to. There's a big line of fat on that piece there. We'll take it off. You want to leave enough skin to where you can wrap it around the, the piece, but you don't want all that extra. It will just turn to leather in the smoker. It'll dry out like beef jerky. There's no, there's no reason for it to be on there. So we take it off. And then most of the time, I guess, and it wasn't the case this in, in this batch of thighs, but most of the time there's this little kneecap like hard cartilage piece right there. And I go ahead and remove it. Um, only about half these pieces in this uh, in this pack had them. Uh, but I, I go ahead and remove them really quick. Sometimes, uh, usually they all do. You, and you, have to, you have to get it off there. And that's all. Now that chicken thigh is ready to be seasoned and cooked. So it's pretty, it's pretty simple. So we'll kind of fly through the rest of these real quick. I always save the little yellow styrofoam uh, trays they come with because I season in them and I carry the meat around in them, stuff like that. You can do this really fast. It's, it's quick work and it's worth doing. Like I say, they come and they're just an absolute mess. Now they're nice and clean and ready to eat. There's less of that bad skin on there that'll turn to leather, so that's awesome. So let's season them now. I'm going to use my own poultry seasoning. Uh, it's called Payne County Bird. Uh, any poultry or pork seasoning should do really well on poultry. Uh, pork seasons work really well on chicken, and vice versa. Uh, I think they have the same. I think the same sort of fats 
And so they, they tend to kind of uh, uh, be complimented by the same sort of seasonings. This is my Payne County bird, but it is, it is sold as a poultry and pork seasoning. There's no sugar in it or anything. We're going to glaze these later, and that's where we'll get our sugar component. And we'll do the same thing with the halves that we butchered earlier. We'll go ahead and season them on both sides, on the skin side and underneath, and we'll put them in a foil pan just like this. These guys are all ready to go. So they go in the fridge now, and they'll sit overnight and dry brine like we talked about earlier. Give that salt time to move into the meat and season it all. So here are those chicken halves all butchered up and ready to go. Without those ribs, look at all the meat we can get the seasoning on there. And the smoke will also be able to get in there during the braise. There we go. All ready to go into the fridge. Now, since we're cooking the big trailer smoker, there's going to be a little extra room, of course. So I'm going to show you how I smoke breakfast sausage. It's very simple. I buy these one pound rolls of sausage, uh, breakfast sausage. This is spicy, but you can buy whatever kind. Take the wrappers off and we will uh, put a special seasoning on the outside of them uh, and smoke them alongside the other product. This is really, really good when it's done. So you just take the packaging off and then just kind of mend it back together where you scarred it up with the knife. And then we're going to make a rub for these, which is one part of your favorite dry rub, barbecue rub, and one part brown sugar. I'm using Payne County Rust. It's my, it's my kind of all, all meat seasoning and rub that I use. It's the one that I manufacture. So there's one part rust in this case and one part brown sugar. And just mix it together and uh, pour it on a paper plate and press this sausage into it. It's going to look like there's a lot of seasoning adhering to the outside of the sausage, like, like maybe too much, but it's not. Since you cut it halfway with sugar like that, um, it, it's, it's not too salty at all. And you want to do this right before you cook it. You don't want to let this sit in the fridge overnight. That sugar will pull water out of the product and the sugar, sugar will melt right off and take the seasoning with it. You want to go ahead and get it in the smoker after you rub it. And just like all my videos, I am going to go through the fire making process and the process by which I spray oil on the outside of the firebox and clean the grates. I just want this to be on all my videos. Just in case someone watches one of these videos and not all of them, this, is a, this should be muscle memory. Clean out the firebox first and then I light my fire a good hour before I need it. So I'm going to use oil on a paper towel. That's extra oil. I fried some wings, some chicken wings, and I kept the oil afterwards, and I use it for my fire starter. And I make a log cabin style fire, light it up, and we'll wait an hour. And then I go ahead and spray the outside of my fire box with pan release vegetable oil. And then we're going to wait. An hour. I always wait at least an hour. And that's how long it takes before that will burn down to a great bed of coals. That way you have good clean smoke. And there it is. That is an incredibly hot fire right there. When we put a new piece of wood in there, it'll ignite immediately and you'll have less dirty smoke. And then I like to use a nylon brush, not the metal ones. And I spray the whole grate down with oil and polish it with a paper towel. Clean it all up. Every time. So there is our dry brined product. It's been in the fridge overnight, except for the sausage. And we'll load it up in the pan, skin side up. Chicken's an incredibly easy thing to cook. When it comes to barbecuing, this is one of the easiest things. The bite through skin that we're going to achieve can be really, can be really tough. Uh, can be, sorry, it can be really hard to do. Uh, not tough. That's what we're trying to do is get a tender product. Um, but if you've ever smoked chicken before and you've gotten that dark, leathery, hard skin you can't chew through and you kind of pull it off and then eat the good meat underneath, that's what's happened is you've, you've, you've dried out that skin. I'm going to show you how you can achieve a good, smoky, barbecued chicken uh, and still have bite through skin. So it's about an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes in and um, the sausage is done. When it hits 160 degrees in the middle, the sausage is done. 
And since it's been, an, I think it's an hour and 45 minutes is, is how long we've been in here. But the reason I'm taking it out is because the chicken now, the, the crust has now set on that chicken. If I run my fingernail along the back of it like this, it doesn't rub off. And there's plenty of smoke flavor on there at this point. And now is when I spray them down with, I can't believe it's not butter spray, or you can brush on melted margarine if you like, or you can use butter. Uh, I like this the best, and it's the easiest to apply. It adds uh, quite a bit of richness to the product. And then I'm going to stick a probe thermometer in the deepest part of the thigh so that we'll know when the chicken halves uh, hit 185 degrees. And I'm also going to put a probe into the deepest part of the thickest chicken thigh in the thighs over here so that we know uh, when they hit 200 degrees. I love these little thermometers I found on Amazon. Uh, they come with a, a magnet in the back, a probe thermometer, and they have that, that wired probe also. So these thighs are already at 160 degrees, so they're safe to eat right now, but they're not soft yet. That skin would be really, really tough. So the sausage is done. We'll take it off there, take it inside, and cut it up after it's uh, rested just a little bit, and then we'll tend to the chicken. The sausage is really good. It's another one of those showstoppers at a party. It uh, tastes a lot better than something something like summer sausage if you're having sausage and crackers. And it goes good with barbecue sauce or cheese. Some people smoke it like this and then they cook it for breakfast also. You can see it has a nice smoke ring on it, about five-eighths of an inch deep. Nice and moist and completely cooked. So I slice it just in, in, in slices like this and then, uh, like I said, I've taken it to a lot of parties and gatherings. It's really easy to do. It's inexpensive. Breakfast sausage is a good thing to keep in the freezer for when you're barbecuing, so you can throw these on at the same time. This is really good. It tastes a lot different than you might think it may. It doesn't taste like just plain old breakfast sausage. It really is kicked up when it's barbecued like this. There's several things like that. Braunschweiger's like that. Bologna's like that. So that's all done and ready to be wrapped up. So we can see we have a 202 degree temperature on our thighs. And our half birds are getting there too. They're at 179 in their thigh. We're going to pull them off at 185, so we're really close. But we'll take the uh, thighs out now to rest until the halves are done. I'll show you what they look like. Since we braised it, we've broken down the connective tissue in that skin, and it is just as soft as can be. You could push your finger right through that skin. So we only have one step left on these chicken thighs, uh, which is glazing. But we'll wait until the halves are done. We'll glaze them all at the same time, just like we glaze ribs. I think it adds a lot of flavor. It makes them. Uh, it just really makes makes that extra extra uh, bit of flavor on there when you add a good glaze. And here's our halves. We're up past 185 now, so it's time to pull them off there. The breast meat. When I checked it, it was 174, which sounds like it's a really high temperature for white meat. If you were grilling white meat, like I said earlier, that would be way too high of a temperature. But since this is surrounded its own fat and its own skin and we're braising it, it stays very moist and very juicy. So I like to glaze on these drying racks, like these cookie drying racks. You don't have to. You can put it right on the rack of your smoker. It just makes it easier to move around. And I have them. I've bought them at Goodwill or whatever and keep them out in the garage just for this. So we'll put all the chicken thighs up there, and then we will uh, polish a glaze on there. I'm going to use my own barbecue sauce called Hog's Bane, but any good sweet Kansas City-style barbecue sauce should do a great job with this. You don't have to do this step, but I suggest it. Please try it. Uh, use a good sweet barbecue sauce on the outside. A lot of it drips off, and uh, it, it just enough sticks to where it adds just enough flavor like it's supposed to.
And you could put that on with a squirt bottle or you could uh, dip them in the sauce or whatever you want to do. I like to just brush it on so I have more control over where it goes. So those thighs are ready to cook a little bit longer in here, just like the ribs. We want that sauce to stick on there and get kind of tacky so it holds onto the product. It takes about 15 or 20 minutes in, in a smoker. As you can see on that temperature gauge, we've lost a lot of our heat, so we'll leave it on there quite a while. I think I left it on here 20 or 30 minutes today. There's our chicken halves, and we'll do the same thing with them. Glaze them up good. All right, so now that sauce has gotten all tacky and our chicken's done. Take it inside and we'll let it sit for a little while and rest. And uh, we'll be able to cut it up and put it all on a platter for, for eating. You gotta be really careful, these chickens, they will fall two pieces on you. It's very tender. And because we braised it, that white meat um, uh, of the breast will be very, very moist and juicy. You'll see here in a minute when we cut it up how well this came out. And then there's our thighs. They came out perfect. Those are just like candy. Especially when you can bite through the skin. That, that really makes it a lot better than when you have to pull the skin off and kind of throw it away. And there it is. This stuff came out spectacular today. So here's one of those chicken halves. And as you can see, you can pull the forequarter from the rear quarter apart really easily. Because everything is rendered, everything is tenderized in that braise. And we have breast meat and wing on the right, and this is the thigh and leg portion. Go ahead and cut the drumstick off so you can see the inside of the dark meat. See how incredibly moist that is? If you've ever smoked a chicken and you've gotten that dry, hard, leathery skin, try a braise like this. It really makes a difference. And this white meat is just juicy as can be. I slice it on the bone like this so uh, people can use tongs or they can use their fork and just, and just grab what they want off of there. It's very soft, very moist. You can see all that juice on the cutting board from it. And then these thighs, they came out great too. The skin's very soft. The meat pulls right off the bone. This is great for making chicken salad or pulled chicken sandwiches or just eating just like this. I generally do it. But you can see it just comes right apart. Everything is perfectly cooked, very moist. The skin is very tender. You want that skin to just at the lightest tug pull right apart, just like that. Your teeth go right through it. And it won't work on all the chicken pieces all the time. Sometimes there's enough fat under there, it'll still be a little bit rubbery. So you can't do much about that. But you can see here, Perfectly bite through. In competition, we take the skins off, remove all the fat from the back, and put the skins back on. That's a lot of work. And then you always can bite through it, but it's just not worth that sort of tedious work if you're cooking for friends or family or even yourself. So here's that platter. This is, uh, this is everything once it's all done. We've got our half chickens. We've got our chicken thighs. We've got our barbecued smoked sausage. So I hope you learned something from this one. That bite through skin is very achievable. Just employ the braise like that. Follow our temperatures on the bigrockfoods.com resources tab. There is uh, there's a couple charts on there for tender cuts and for tough cuts. And the chicken is on the tender cuts one. So anyway, hope you had fun with this and I hope you learned something. And I will see you next time.
Thanks.